Hi there, my name is Gardner, your friendly neighborhood Linux gamer. Today I wanted to talk about 10 more features that I think we need on the Steam Deck. Now, I already did a video of 10 features that I think we need, or 10 fixes that I think we need. Uh, you can check out that video up here. Uh, but, I think that there's a lot more room for improvement on the Steam Deck, especially on the software side, so let's just jump into this video. So when you first boot up desktop mode, or when you go into the boot menu, Steam is not open. Now, Steam is the thing that actually reprograms the controller to behave in certain ways depending on the state of the Steam API. But I would like to be able to change the bindings of the Steam Deck when Steam isn't open. This is kind of doable in big picture mode or with a third party tool. And if you open up big picture mode from the desktop, you can actually change some of these settings. But I would like to have this menu in the Steam Deck UI because frankly, the Steam Deck's controller configuration is significantly improved uh, from big picture mode. It's less crazy and it's way more simplified. I just prefer the deck UI. All right, next up, let's talk about game scope. So what is game scope? Well, it's what they're calling a micro compositor. It is a software layer that handles switching between windows and drawing things like the Steam overlay, quick access menu, and notifications over your game. You wouldn't be far off from thinking of GameScope as the deck's extremely simplified desktop environment. Right now, GameScope allows basic, undecorated, 98-looking windows for certain launchers and configuration utilities. Now, this implementation is honestly pretty brutish and not particularly elegant. I'd like to see this get improved, perhaps with a color scheme that fits in better with the Steam Deck's UI. It's particularly grotesque when a tiny window that renders on the screen and then GameScope scales that window up. You can see all the pixels, it doesn't look very good. There are better ways of doing this, and I'm hoping to see improvements to, to this aspect of GameScope, but GameScope has other issues. Y you can actually have multiple applications running at once inside of game mode. You can have, let's say, a game running, and then you can open uh, a flat pack that you've installed uh, from desktop mode in Steam, and you can run Google Chrome, you can run something like Plexamp, and you can run a game all simultaneously. But let's say that you have a launcher that spawns another window, something like Minecraft, for example. While Minecraft waits for you to log into your Microsoft account, it'll play this animation uh, in the background. Well, GameScope gets confused by this animation being played and will frantically switch between the two windows until it settles on the one with the animation playing even though this isn't the appropriate window. There should be some kind of button combo that switches between windows inside GameScope. An alt-tab, if you will. This is something that I think needs to be done in GameScope, giving us some level of manual control over what window takes focus. If it was something like Steam plus Y, that would be great. Now we come to the performance HUD, Valve's implementation of Mango HUD. This thing. When I started writing this video, there were only three levels of customization. None of them were a simple frame rate readout. And that was going to be one of my complaints here, but credit where it's due, Valve has already addressed this. So now we have four levels of performance stats. I like these, but I would also like to be able to pick which corner the HUD actually appears in on my screen. Because playing a game like Spelunky with Mango HUD enabled completely obscures critical user information in the HUD. Now, one thing I noticed the other day is that the recommended tab uh, in your home menu is actually showing games with an unknown status. While many untested games will, can definitely be played on the deck, others can't. The recommended tab I don't think should be showing anything but playable or verified titles. All right, let's talk about notifications. Now, notifications are actually pretty great on the Steam Deck, but I'd like to be able to clear a specific notification or press the options button and clear all notifications at once, since they just kind of build up and live in that menu until like maybe you restart the device. Now this might sound weird, but the Steam Deck has changed my relationship with Steam. What I once esteemed as not much more than the OG game launcher has started to feel much more like a platform to me. And I never really cared about screenshots or friends lists or whatever else was built into Steam. But now I'm actually wanting to engage with Steam, with the Steam community. And one of the things that I would really like to see revamped is Steam achievements. You'd be forgiven for not knowing that achievements were even a thing on Steam. They honestly, they've always kind of felt like an afterthought to me. And given the fact that Steam was always just a launcher to me, I really never cared about Steam achievements. But since I started playing on the Steam Deck, I've actually tried to earn achievements. 
Long ago on my Xbox 360, I was completely obsessed with achievements. And that is kind of rekindled here on the Steam Deck. Now, I think that there are a few things that Valve could do to improve their achievement system. First, make achievements a first-class citizen in the user interface. Currently, if you want to view your achievements, you actually need to go to the Your Stuff tab on the library entry for whatever game you actually want to see the achievements for. And there are a few listed here, but to see all of them, you actually need to enter this submenu, which is really just the Steam community page. I'd like this section to be moved out of the Your Stuff tab and into its own tab. I'd also like to see this menu expanded and see all achievements shown here rather than needing to go to the Steam community page. In this tab, you should also be able to pin achievements to your profile with the press of a button. I'd also like to see the current game's achievements in the quick access menu or maybe the game's overlay so that you can quickly and easily reference this while playing. I'd like to see a native interface to view and manage all of your achievements. And finally, and most importantly, I believe that there should be a sound effect when you earn an achievement. Sometimes I just miss the notification when I've earned one, and I'd really like to have that satisfying or sound. But alas, earning an achievement on Steam doesn't make a sound yet, and it really kind of hollows the experience. So now let's talk about the Steam Deck's UI. It's pretty awesome. It's fun. It's inviting. The sound effects, which we've talked about before, are actually really good. They provide positive feedback and are perfect for the device. It feels like I'm interacting with Steam rather than poking and prodding a desktop app. But there are issues. The Steam Deck's UI is a bit buggy. Half the time I go into my library, the third item on the line I'm focused on will be enlarged as if it's the one selected. But it isn't. I can leave the library and come back and sometimes it will be fixed, sometimes it won't be. Similarly, if I return to game mode from the desktop with an external monitor connected, the overlays in game mode, this includes the Steam and quick access menus, will be the wrong size. The quick access menu is just not visible and the bottom items on the Steam menu are drawn off screen. Finally, no matter what, the Steam store is not formatted properly when connected to an external monitor. But these aren't the only issues. Scrolling through items can cause dropped frames. It doesn't matter if it's the library, the quick access menu, the settings panel or whatever, scrolling just can be a bit unstable and I'd like to see that shored up. Now let's switch gears. One of my favorite features of the Steam Deck is that it actually has a night mode. And folks, it's 2022. If your device doesn't have a night mode, then the manufacturer is doing something wrong. But the fact is the Steam Deck's night mode could be better. I mean, we already have the ability to adjust the color tint of night mode and we can even toggle it on and off in the quick access menu. But in short, I believe that in the settings menu, you should be able to set a fixed time of day or enable the rough geographic location of your device to automatically apply night mode at dusk. This is something that GNOME and KDE can do, so why shouldn't game mode be able to do it? All right, let's switch gears again. I want title specific performance profiles. This is one thing that I find particularly obnoxious. If you enable the 30 FPS cap, it is set globally no matter what game you're playing. So if I'm in a game like God of War, which absolutely chews through the battery, I turn on the frame rate limiter. And then I switch to another game, let's say Spelunky, which is quite light on battery consumption. But the frame rate limiter is still applied and I really can't play Spelunky at 30 FPS. At a minimum, I would like to see a default that you could set in the settings menu, or maybe in the quick access menu when not in game, and then games would remember your setting whenever you launch them. I'd also like to see game developers specify both performance and battery profiles for their titles. These profiles should not only adjust the quick access battery settings, but I can also imagine presets that change graphics settings as well. Now, in my last video, I proposed a pie in the sky idea an idea that I thought seemed harder to actually implement than the others on the same list. And I have one more such idea. I'd like to see a tier that's actually above verified. Not only does the game need to look great and work well on deck, but it should take advantage of all the features that the Steam Deck has to offer. And the criteria that I've come up with for games that would be ranked higher than verified would be, first, the game must already be deck verified. Next, the game must implement the new Steam Cloud save features on suspend and resume if applicable. It should also have optimizations like custom TDP and frame rate profiles, as I mentioned above. The title should have default graphic settings that target rock solid performance at 30 and 60 FPS on the hardware. 
It should have a version of Proton that, that the developers have specified work great with the with the game if it's not a native version of the game. And finally, the game should have a special build that specifically is optimized for storage space. So it comes packaged with only the textures, 3D geometry, and other assets that you need on the Steam Deck. And I know that there are going to be people who complain about this. Obviously, you would be able to install either the desktop or the storage optimized version of the game and apply any of the graphic settings that you would like. But I think that it would be awesome to have deck optimized versions of games that are respectful of the limited storage space and your battery life. But I would like to know what you think about this, any of the ideas that I've proposed here. Or maybe I missed something. Let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. I want to give a special shout out to my patrons and my YouTube members without whom I wouldn't be able to do this. So thanks guys, I really appreciate it. If you believe in the work that I'm doing here and you wanna help support this show and help this grow, you can join the 100 plus other Linux warriors with the links down below. I think that's gonna do it for this video though. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and stay up to date with all the cool stuff that we're doing here on the channel, all the Steam Deck related content. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.